Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to the 165th episode of Tuesdays with Toby. My name is Toby Frierson, and as I say each week, I am thrilled to be back before you today with another message. Today's message, we're going to go right back to one of my passions, one of my loves. We're going to be talking about those South Carolina Lady Gamecocks. Yes, the SEC champions for the eighth time in 10 years, and we got to bring it up. I mean, anybody who has any type of social media presence or certainly any podcaster or any YouTuber who is a sports fan, a sports lover, particularly one of women's basketball is probably going to be providing some type of commentary, some type of content on this past Sunday's championship game. And I'm going to hop right in there with the rest of them. So here we go. Before I get started with the championship game, let's just back up one day before that to Saturday's game, this past Saturday, where South Carolina took on Tennessee, had a commanding lead against Tennessee in the first half, which that's not really the basketball we've been consistently playing um, in conference play. We haven't been taking commanding leads of that nature. And so uh, our fans over here, we felt really, really good until Tennessee just clawed back clawed back, clawed back, by the way, hats off to Tennessee. And we're finding ourselves down um, with 1.1 second left, and now we're inbounding the ball. And this has been seen around the world. And by now, it has absolutely been overshadowed by the championship game for sure. But to watch a player who is not a three-point shooter by any stretch of the imagination, have the pressure, the weight of the world on her shoulder, the weight of the season, the weight of the game, the weight of her mother and sister are in the stands, having gone to whatever lengths to get these visas to be over here. Hats off to South Carolina for making that happen. Step back, confidently release the shot. No, she didn't call the bank, but it's okay. And to see that ball fall in, to save the game, to save the season for South Carolina, it sent me into an exuberant praise, if you will, of, oh my goodness, like just jumping up and down, screaming. I did rip my voice. My voice is still a little weak from the weekend. And you all, like, I just, I could not believe it. I could not believe that a player who has never had a made three-pointer and only one attempt, if I'm saying that stat correctly, in their entire career win the game off of something that most would say she would not be able to do. Yes, those of you who know what I'm talking about and you watch that game against Tennessee this past Saturday night, you know, no, she wasn't guarded. Nobody came out and contested her. Why would you come and put a hand up in Camila Cardoza's face because she's shooting a three? That's not what we call a high percentage shot for her. Um, no way that's going to go in. So why would I bother to guard it? Well, folks, you already know the outcome because we're actually here right now to talk about the championship game because Camila's heroics got us there. Um, her confidence, her uh, ability to listen to her coach, um, listen to the authority, listen to um, whoever's guiding her and do what that person said because coach says she told her to blankety blank, shoot the blankety blank ball. Toby, what's blankety blank? I don't know. I don't know what Don said. Um, I'm pretty sure it was words that I don't say, um, not even just on the channel, but at any rate, I digress because we got to move on here. I'm setting the stage, right? That Car Camila Cardoza had the best moment in her life on Saturday night. And in less than 24 hours on Sunday, right when her team is about to wrap up the championship game, uh, it had been a highly contested game in terms of a lot of physical play. Um, these, these are two teams who've been battling at it. LSU has been trying to beat South Carolina for several, several times out of the gate, and they've been unsuccessful. LSU has a coaching change, and we all know the iconic Kim Mulkey and all that comes with her. Um, I like the outfits myself. Um, but she, Kim Mulkey um, has a way about her, if you will. And a lot of girls are attracted to that, or a lot of female basketball players are attracted to that, and they go play for her, that grit, that edge, that roughness, that toughness. Some people say she has thug-like behavior. I said some people. I didn't call Kim Mulkey a thug, but people are attracted to that. And so that clashed against uh, Dawn Staley's style and the style of her players. And here we are, almost at the end of the championship game, and no ESPN and every other commentator are brawl did not erupt. 
There was also not a fight. None of those things that we've seen in the media, in print media, or people even giving commentary. But what we saw was a heated battle and we saw, you know, elbows being thrown, hair being pulled or whatever. And it doesn't matter who started it. But Camila Cardoza once again came in and she finished the whole thing. And this, uh, this episode is ending with right in the moment where less than 24 hours prior, Camila Cardoza had the highlight of her sports career in front of a sold out Bon Secures Wellness Arena in Greenville, South Carolina, and all these SEC fans. Then she had the lowest moment of her career where she took two hands and, and pushed and shoved Flage Johnson, big foe, let's go um, Flage, I'm a fan actually, and pushed Flage Johnson to the ground and that led to players leaving benches. It led to Flage's brother coming out of the stands and he's been arrested um, and, and, and all that. It led to so much. But I said all that to say, not giving a commentary on whether Camila should have pushed, should not have pushed. Well, of course she shouldn't have pushed Toby. I don't, I don't know what was going on through her head. I wouldn't have pushed. But um, um, the commentary is more about how we were a hero in mo one moment and we were a villain in the next. And many of us um, who are not on national and international stages and who don't have um, sponsors and deals tied to us and, and thousands or perhaps millions of dollars riding on our name or our career, many of us have had those high and low moments um, very privately um, in the safety of no one ever knowing because who knows who Toby Frierson is, right? That's not a name like a Camila Cardoza. Camila also has aspirations of being a pro one day. So you've got front offices, GMs, um, uh, execs, uh, other, other people looking at her. This was a really, really big deal that goes far beyond a player losing their cool and losing their head um, and, and taking up and standing up for her teammates or standing on business, as the young people like to say. Um, this goes far beyond that. And so in this moment, my only message is, can we think about ourselves when we see things happen to other people? And can we have compassion? And can we have grace? And can we be quick to do some self-reflection? Because that's what I've done. I was like, Toby, when, when was your Camila Cardoza moment? Where within a 24 hour time span, um, you went from one of your life's highs or from a very, very high, all the way down to a, hey, you're now disqualified. You got to sit this one out. You can no longer participate. Um, you are in error and you need to apologize. And I said all that to say, um, Camilla, you'll never see this. Um, you'll never see this. But so I'll, Camilla, I'll talk to all the people who are watching this. Um, let's make sure that in those two moments that we can also push past. This is not career ending for Cardoza. Um, this is not irreparable in terms of she can get her image back. Um, she's been a clean player for South Carolina. This is not behavior that is like, oh, there she goes again. Honestly, y'all, if anybody, uh, the fact that Ashlyn Watkins herself did not retaliate against Flage, hats off to Ashlyn. Um, Ashlyn is no one to mess with. And clearly she's been operating within Coach Don Staley's program and system. And she has learned some of that self-control and self-restraint because Ashlyn doesn't play um, at all. Um, Ashlyn wouldn't need anybody to come to her rescue and to push anybody down. So Ashlyn, shout out to you. Um, I'm trying to wrap this up, but I'm so passionate about us missing a lot of the points here and us not being self-reflective when we see things happen to other people. We're literally trying to comment on that thing or that other person when what we should really be doing is, whoa, that's really unfortunate. Man, I'm really glad that wasn't me. And then thinking about the very specific moment where it could have been you and, um, and giving uh, so much gratitude towards like, wow, like, I'm, I, I got a chance to repair. I recovered from my thing. So let me continue to throw my support behind Cardoza, if you were already supporting her. Let me continue to wish her well. She's going to have a phenomenal career. The South Carolina Gamecocks are still the champions. Nope, Cardoza didn't get a chance to participate in the trophy celebration. Um, and many of her teammates did not as well um, because they left the bench or left the bench area. And this is just a lesson learned for all of us. I have no personal commentary on... 
Kim Mulkey in terms of her post-game comments versus Don Staley. These are two different women. They've always been two very different women and they've handled themselves differently. And their responses were within the way in which they show up all the time. Point blank, period. We shouldn't expect Kim to show up any different than who she is. And we don't expect um, Don Staley to show up any different than who she is. I'm a South Carolina Gamecock. I rock every day. This has been my commentary on Camila Cardoza and how you can go from the highest moment in your life to the lowest moment in your life, all within a super short time frame. But you can recover. You will recover. Camila will recover. And I'm throwing all of my weight and all my support and all my hopes into the fact that the South Carolina Gamecocks will be national champions um, within a few weeks. That is what I'm banking on. Hey, this, this ended up being a little bit longer than I thought because I got lost in my thoughts about this. I'm so passionate about what I witnessed and just kind of how everyone's talking about it and how they're missing their own story in it. And that's what I wanted to bring us back to today. So, hey, you guys like, share, and subscribe. Go Cox, and I'll see you back here next week. Take care, everybody. Congratulations, ladies.